I'd firstly like to say a few words regarding the very sad and untimely death during the recess of one of Parliament's long-serving security guards, David Ernest Allenson. Like so many of his colleagues, David demonstrated great professionalism, courteousness and kindness and was always willing to go the extra mile for the public. I've known him from the first 15 in the Onslow College Rugby Scrum and have known him to be a very keen and enthusiastic outdoors man. On the night he died, he opted to ride his bike home from Parliament and tragically collided with a car. His popularity and respect is demonstrated by the fact that already the third condolence book at Parliament's rubber door is almost filled in. Our thoughts and sympathy go out to his widow and his two sons. But Mr Speaker, on another note, Labour's new leadership voting arrangements look very, very messy. 40% caucus vote, 40% members vote, and 20% affiliated vote. Now, we can think of Andrew Little. Andrew Little, well, he's probably got a few of the affiliated Labour union votes, a few of them anyway, but he's got other, uh, other distractions, so he's out. Then we've got the three Davids. David Cunliffe, of course, man of the people. Well, look, he's studiously going round getting the people's vote. He's studiously going round getting the people's vote, and he's got unique methodology. As you all know, he lives in the very affluent area of St Mary's Bay, but occasionally, every month or so, he goes to a cupboard and he picks out these old jeans and he goes down to mingle with the good people, his constituents in Grey Lynn. But he selects them at Sunday afternoon and he picks out those who he's going to have the afternoon tea. So he's got the people's vote. Then, of course, there's David Parker. David Parker, well, look, he's a little bit thin on the ground in all three of them. But then we've got the present incumbent, David Shearer. David Shearer is his name. And, indeed, David Shearer, well, he's got the caucus vote for now. And I also understand from the New Zealand Herald, he's got the votes of a few wandering uh, warlords from Somalia, not to mention Liberian cannibals who happen to be refugees. So he's right. But he's got Grant Robinson breathing down his neck. And they've all got the Greens who want to take over. So I've got some advice for them, Mr Speaker. I've got to have some advice for them. They've got this idea of this... Uh, they've secured this, this three-voting system. But I reckon they can outgun the Greens by having three co-leaders. Three co-leaders for the Labour Party. Can... Can we imagine, Mr Speaker, the combinations and permutations of Andrew Little, Grant Robertson and the three, the three Davids all vying for leadership or co-leadership of the Labour Party? What absolute mayhem that would cause. Now, Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker I want to talk to you just a little bit, a little bit about what the really good news in this parliament, and that's the fantastic leadership that National has had in the health field. Spending of $14.1 billion in the last budget represents the most ever $2 billion more than in 2008. And we heard in question time today that New Zealand is literally leading the way in health despite tough times globally. Under National, New Zealand has the third highest growth in health spending of 28 OECD nations for 2009-10, according to that OECD report. And it is very relevant to point out that some OECD countries, like UK, like Denmark, like Norway, that Labour always is talking about, have had reduced spending. We have the fifth highest level of public health spending as a portion of GDP in the OECD. And Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, I could go on with more and more good news in the area of, of health brought by, by the national government. Oh, Mr Speaker. 
the Honourable Annette King.